Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yasin wal-Qur'an al-Hakim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasinli amri wa khil al-Uqdatam min lisani wa khil al-Qawli. This surah has no pairs, just like the human heart has no proof. This surah is unique in its uh, way of discourse. And as you know, most of the surahs, they have pairs, but this surah has no pair. The Prophet ﷺ has called the surah Qalbul Qur'an, it is the heart of the heart of the Qur'an. So that's why I was giving the tashbih from the heart. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Yaseen, no one will, knows what Yaseen means, but in generally there's a consensus that it's referring to the Prophet ﷺ. Other people have said other things, but I'm not going to go into the details of that. Wal Qur'an al Hakim. Wa when it says wa and in with the with the qasam, with the swearing, it means consider this. Wal Qur'an al Hakim and consider this wise Qur'an. This Qur'an that is full of hikmah, this Qur'an that's full of wisdom. In generally, in general, the word hikmah is specifically used for sunnah of the Prophet. Just so people know, يعني, the verse of the Quran where it says, "Yatnu alehim ayatihi wa yuzakihi wa yuallimuhum al-kitab wa al-hikmah." Hikmah in that verse, in addition to Quran, also means the sunnah of the Prophet. So the sunnah is also hikmah, and the Quran is also hikmah. And by the Qur'an that is full of wisdom. Now, obviously, if this is the beginning of the subject, then something about the Qur'an's attribute of wisdom will be soon revealed. إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ O Muhammad ﷺ, you are definitely amongst the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عَلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And you are definitely on the straight path. تَنْزِيلَ الْعَزِيزَ الْرَحِيمِ And this... Qur'an has been revealed by Al-Aziz, the one who has authority and is Rahim, is merciful. So this Qur'an comes down to express Allah's mercy as well as Allah's authority. The Qur'an has rules in it, you have to follow, but at the same time it leads you to the gates of Allah's mercy. Tanzilul Aziz al-Rahim And also what? لِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمًا So that you warn your people. You warn the people. <coughs> مَا أُنذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ Their forefathers were not warned. Obviously, Prophet Muhammad came at a specific time. The people before that were not warned. And therefore, essentially, they're not responsible. This subject will be mentioned about two, three times in Surah Al-Yasin. We'll come to that. لِذُنذِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أُنذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ وَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ And their state was of ghafla. In Islamic history, we call it the period of jahiliyyah, the period of ignorance. And the opposite of ignorance in this sense is Islam. So there's the period of Jahiliyyah, we call it the Jahiliyyah poetry, for example. And then came Islam. So one of the opposites of Jahiliyyah, which is ignorance, is Islam. Nowadays we have, you can say, Neo-Jahiliyyah, a new Jahiliyyah, you know, in the world. Because the same thing's happening around us that ha was happening at the time of the Prophet. People fighting and killing for <coughs> over small things, you know. <coughs> I won't go into details of that right now. Now the Quran is itself saying about itself. The Quran has become an excuse over the majority of its people that the Quran has reached in the time of the Prophet. The Quran is saying, meaning it's the truth. And the truth, meaning in this sense over here, it means it's an excuse over the it is it's a, an excuse against the people. Over most of them. Majority of the people, they now have, by the time the surah is being revealed, oh, Muhammad, he, he's, he's on to something. He, he knows what he's, he, he has something. He, he's on to something. He's right. But even though the excuses against them in their own hearts are saying, yes, Muhammad, he has something here that's right. But most of them will not believe because they're going to continue to listen to Abu Lahab, they're going to continue to listen to their leaders. And uh, you know what happens is people listen to their leaders blindly. Even if people know that our leader is wrong, they're still going to support their leader. We see this in the Muslim world all the time. Right? If somebody's with Nawaz Sharif, he's with Nawaz Sharif. Now, no matter what happens, no matter what he does, 
right? So it doesn't matter. If somebody is with, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? The sort of uh, the prime minister and the People's Party leader. Somebody's with that, he's going to be with me. That's it. So people follow leadership blindly. So Allah says about these people that are now blind. It's as if we put shackles on their necks. Because the biggest, you know, freedom in Islam is what? Freedom in Islam is not freedom in the general sense of the word that we use in, the, in, the, in, in our times. Freedom as in freedom of to do whatever you want, to make whatever choices you want. But freedom is the one who is free from his lusts, from his desires, from his whims. This is freedom. According to Quran, this is the the person who has freed himself from the shackles of his inner desires, his inner evils. Every one of us has evil within us. We just don't, you know, we, we would not act any differently than any of the other tyrants given the opportunity. Meaning, we just don't have an army. You know. So anyway, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا And we have put shackles on their necks. And they have chains and then they have their heads, they're up because of these now, this is tied in there. So they're always in this state of pride. So because of this state of pride, even though they know Muhammad is, and by the way, uh, Abu Lahab, I had explained that. Uh, the situation, I will explain it again just so that everybody understands this. The Quraysh had a very special international position. The Roman Empire and the Persian Empire at the time of the Prophet, they were in war. And so you couldn't go from the Byzantine Empire into Persia and Persia into the Byzantine Empire. They needed new trade routes. So the trade route that was easiest for everyone was to go through Arabia. And then you have the Zamzam water and the place of rest in Mecca. So this became the international trade route. So there was treaties with both Persian as well as the Byzantine. If you ever read the first hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, the very first hadith, if you open up Sayyid Bukhari, it expresses this also because when Abu Sufyan was in front of Her Hercules, the emperor of the Byzantine Empire at that time, so why was he? They were doing their trade routes. When they were doing their trade routes, now these Arab tribes, they had their gods. But they had forced, the Quraysh had forced the Arab tribes that you're going to put all your gods in Mecca. All the gods, so there's the Kaaba and all the little idols of all the different tribes, all the major gods of all the little tribes were in Mecca. So they, all the gods were being held in hostages in Mecca. So that these trade routes, they'll be going, because what would happen is they would raid them. If any Byzantine empire a trade route is coming, or any Persian Empire, and so they, the, the Bedouins, they would raid them. In order to keep them from raiding them, they took their gods and put them as hostages in Mecca. So everyone can come once in, a, once in a year at the time of Hajj. So they still had Hajj going on. So you can come and Hajj and worship your gods and then go back, but you can make your smaller gods. Like, uh, you know, one companion of the Prophet said that, I made a god and I got hungry and I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> he made a god and they made a date and he got hungry. <laughs> so he says, I knew that this was, <laughs> this was a joke. <laughs> anyway, the point is, so these trade routes were going, and Quraysh had their gods as hostages. So, listening to Muhammad, they said, yeah, he has a good point, there's only one god, but the real reason why they were not willing to give in to Prophet, look, they were willing, because the Prophet Muhammad was not, Wasallam was not a normal person. He was a Hashemite, meaning he was a Banu Hashem. He was not only of Quraysh, but of Quraysh he was a Banu Hashem. He had a very high nobility, meaning the Prophet had a very high nobility. They had to come to a point where they had to try to uh, compromise with him. We'll worship your God one year, you, you worship our God. Or you, whoever you want to marry will give you. Whoever, whatever wealth you want will give you. What, just whatever, make this go away. And this was one of the first 
commandments given to the Prophet ﷺ from the very beginning. Well, uh, you know, uh, do not slip because they're going to try to compromise with you. Don't compromise. So, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالٍ فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَبْطَالِ فَهُمُّ اُطْمَعُونَ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ صَدًّا And we have put a barrier before them. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ And behind them. صَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ And we have overwhelmed their eyesight فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِهُونَ They cannot see. Now what they cannot see with what? Not these physical eyes. They have no spiritual insight. They have no spiritual depth. They, they see the truth. They hear the truth. But their own wishes, their own desires, their own lusts have them chained. So even though they know what Muhammad is saying is right, it sounds right, Qur'an is miraculous, we don't have an answer for Qur'an. And you know, this is very important, that the Prophet ﷺ, he had criticized every single aspect of the Qur'ayshi society. For what reason do you kill the child girl? Anybody with human nature would say, you know, Muhammad is right. Why do you kill the child? Bro? Then the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing to Abu Lahab. Tabbat yada bi lahabim wa tab. Why? Because everybody knows this man is bad. This man is not a good man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bi din Have you seen the one who, who denies the day of judgment? He's the one who pushes away the orphans. These are not just words. In that small city, think of Mecca was as big as a college campus. M University of Maryland, college campus. Mecca was this big. And in that society, when you say, have you seen the one who pushes away the orphan? They know who is being referred to here. <laughs> it's pretty clear. Who, is, who the ayahs of Quran are pointing to. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Woe on those Destruction is for those who, when they do trade, they don't do fair trade. This is all clear who these people are. So, so people were seeing, and this is very important, so people were seeing, Muhammad is criticizing, why do we kill them? You know Sumayyah, one of the companions of the Prophet. Why did she accept Islam? Yasef, her son, accepted Islam. And she's, he is now arguing with his mother and father. And he says, she says, okay, show, read something of the Qur'an to me. What is his message? Yeah, we know Muhammad, he's a nice man, he smiles, he's always cheerful. What is his message? And then he read those verses. <laughs> For what reason this child girl has, the child girl is killed? And she says, and she starts talking to her husband. And says, you know what, I was almost buried alive to death. Meaning, it would be equivalent in today's world if you think if we had an Islamic movement, a strong, if you can imagine this, if we had a strong Islamic movement in which we said, alcohol is bad, why are we drinking alcohol? And then some lady here is some Muslim talking in some conference that alcohol is bad for our society and her son died in an alcohol, D-I-U, he, he was drinking alcohol and he died and she, it would hit her heart. This is bad, this is wrong. So imagine, but this happening like a hundred times more intensely. So the Prophet you know, he had no one, this is very important to understand, it's not like today. People were very clear what Muhammad was saying and what he wanted. They knew what his criticisms of the God society were, they knew what he wanted, but they were shackled to those trade routes, basically. At the international level, the elite, they couldn't let go of those trade routes. Because if they let go of their trade routes, then they have their whole business, their whole economy, and the rising of Quraysh would go down. By the way, this is the ayah the Prophet was reading. If you remember when the Prophet went on Hijrah, what was the surah he was reading? when he left his bed and put Ali in his place and he was going to slip out and go to Medina it was Sutul Yasin that he was reading this surah when he was leaving and this ayah وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ and we have put a barrier before them and a barrier behind them and we have, oh, we have put a covering over their eyes so this is exactly what happened the, Allah put a covering over their eyes and it was as if they weren't able to see the Prophet in the Prophet 
had slipped away from there. They, because that night they were going to kill him. So, وَسَوَاءُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ Now, things have gone to the point of no return. وَسَوَاءُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنزِرُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُمْ O Muhammad, whether you warn them or don't warn them. They have now their alliances with their Abu Lahab and Abu Jahal. They don't care how what Nuwaj Shriq does or what he doesn't do or what Zardar. They're just with him no matter what. Okay? What Abu Lahab does, they're with him no matter what. سَوَاءُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنزِرُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Whether you warn them or don't warn them, they're not gonna, they're not gonna believe. It's point of no return. إِنَّمَا تُنزِرُ But who can you warn? Who are the people? You know, this Qur'an is like a magnet. You ever doing that experiment where you have wood and then you have the, the iron and then you take the magnet and the magnet brings up the iron filing to the magnet. You ever did this experiment? Do this in school. You ever Huh? You know what? Okay, so let's say there's a magnet and there's wood. So people with good nature, and this is a very important part. People with good nature, don't kill the, don't kill the female child, don't bury her, don't cheat, don't be like Abu Lahab. People that are of good nature, they're going to automatically be attracted to Quran because its message is so powerful. And the people that are that that don't have something there. They're, they're going to be like that wood, even if you, put the, if you put the magnet there, the iron will stick with the iron, but the, ma the, the wood will stay behind. So this is the same thing. So who can you warn? Who are you going to warn? <laughs> but you can, O Muhammad, warn those who follow the message. But why they're following the message? Number one, because once they heard Quran once, especially in that language, then there was an attraction, it was almost an addiction. You needed your... You needed to hear the Qur'an even if you were a non-Muslim. And the one who is subdued to Allah. He's willing to, he's willing to accept the truth and subdue himself to Allah. Even though he's in the ghaib, meaning he doesn't see Allah. There's two opinions about this. One is we are in the ghaib. Meaning we can't see heaven and hell. I've talked about this before. But the other is that that is the reality and we are in the unseen. But anyway. So give him good tidings of, of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a very noble and a very generous uh, reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the ayah that Shaykh Rochelle read the other day when he did Surah Yasin. إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي الْمَوْتَ Indeed, it is we who bring the dead to life. So Allah says, I bring the dead to life. وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُ Now, وَنَكْتُبُ here, we write. This what is another example of what I was mentioning the other day in Jum'ah. This نَكْتُبُ is where? We write, Allah writes somewhere? No, it's in Nuhul Mahfuz. In their Qadr, what they will be doing. إِنَّمَا وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُ And we... Write what they have sent forward of good deeds and bad deeds. Whatever they did comes forward. And whatever has happened as a consequences of that. So you did something good because you did something good. Other people did good. So you get the reward of all of that. So all of that comes to you. And more than that, everything is before us like a clear, clearly in front of, in front of us. Now, this example of the prophets is being given. So this is the introduction. The introduction is, look, Muhammad is the messenger. Those that were before, they didn't know, they're not at fault. Muhammad has come to you. Most of you now know that this is the truth. This is what the point is. Most of you now know that this is the truth, but you're shackled to your desires and your whims. And even though your heart's telling you this is the truth, you're not accepting this. But those people who fear Allah, they will definitely follow this Qur'an. After, and, and after you die, Allah will raise you and tell you what the consequences of your actions were. You don't see it here. You can deny Muhammad in this world. Or you can lie about Muhammad in this world that nothing burns your tongue. 
If you lie, your tongue is not going to burn. If you steal, your hands are not going to be cut off. I mean, Allah is not, that will happen that day. That day. So, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِ الْمَوْتَ وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُ وَآثَارَهُ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ Now, this example of the Prophet, this is being given to tell you that you think because you feel things are in your control in this life, that nothing will happen. Now, just go over this whole example and then we'll come back to its specifics. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرِيَةِ Allah says, and give them the example of the people of the village. So there was some village, there was a place. إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ When a prophet came to them. A messenger came to the people of the village, and then what happened? إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِ مُثْنَيْنِ And then in addition to that one prophet, Allah sent two more prophets. فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا They denied them. And then we helped them with a third. And they said, Look, we are messengers to you. We are Allah's messengers. We, you have to listen to us. So what is the attitude of the others, especially the elite of society? Because who always has a, prophet with, a problem with the prophets? It's not the poor. It's the elite. It's the leadership of Quraysh that had a problem with Prophet Muhammad. What is he asking us? To get rid of all of these idols, what will happen to our money? What will happen to our business? What will happen to our trade? إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِ مُثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُهُمَا فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثِ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُسْتَلُونَ قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا Look, you're nothing special. You're just a human being like us. What's so special about it? This is the problem that we have sometimes in the Muslim Ummah. If we, it's the same problem coming out from two different directions. We either say, you're not a prophet because you're a human being. Or if we say, you're a prophet, you must not be a human being. The problem is the same. You know? So, no. You're nothing but a human like us. And Allah has revealed nothing. What is this? Nonsense. In antum illa takdibun. You're just lying. So they deny him. Qalu Rabbuna ya'lamu inna ilaykum musallum. They said, no, no. Allah knows we are messengers to you. Wa ma alayna illa al-balahu al-mubin. Nothing is upon us but to convey clearly. Why is this being mentioned here? Wa ma alayna illa al-balahu al-mubin is being mentioned. Because what has the Prophet done by now in Quraysh, from what I've already said? He has clearly what? He has clearly conveyed the message to them. They know it's, what is, there's no misconceptions or biases. There's no Fox News here trying to, uh, you know, uh, the, the propaganda was the Quran itself. They were reacting to the Quran. Actually, the Prophet was in control of the media in that sense. Because... When they said you are tha, you, uh, that you are kadhab, you are sahir, you are majnoon, you are crazy, what were they reacting to? They were reacting to the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاهُ الْمُبِينَ So those prophets said, it's our job to only convey it to you, just as Muhammad has now conveyed to you completely and clearly, you know this is the truth, and now your self-interests and your interests of the world, they are keeping you from accepting Islam. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاهُ الْمُبِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا تَطَيَّبْنَا بِكُمْ Now what happens? One is, okay, I don't agree with you, but that's fine, go ahead, do whatever you're doing. But that's not what the elite want. They want the message to die. They want to eradicate the message. So what do they say? When the Prophet say, we've, compla- we've, we've conveyed you the message to you, you know it's the truth, right? That's what they're saying. So their response is not like what Quran said, قُلْ يَا يُوَ الْكَافِرُونَ لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم أعبد لكم دينكم ولي الدين. That's not the response. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. The response should be okay. Then for you is your way. For us is our way. You do your deen. We'll do our deen. That should be the response. But what is the response that happens? قالوا they say قالوا وما علينا قالوا إننا تطيرنا بكم. We consider you a bad omen. Not that you're just another human being. 
you have your own way. No, you're a bad omen, and we have to get rid of you. You're something bad for us. You're bad for our society. We're going to get rid of you. This is the reaction of knowing that this is the truth. So, If you don't stop doing this, if you don't stop this preaching, why are you giving these ideas out? Why are you preaching this? If you don't stop this preaching, <coughs> We will stone you to death. And definitely a very, uh, you can say, humiliating punishment will come to you from us if you don't stop this preaching right now. They said, look, they said, uh, the prophets responded, you're the bad omen for society. You're the bad luck for the society, not us. Sorry. Your ta'if, your bad omen is on you. No, sorry. Sorry. They said, they said, your omen is with yourselves. Your bad luck is with yourselves. Because why? Because you have been reminded. You know this is the truth. But you are a people, you know, Israf. You have your interests, israf, you have your transgressions. You're, because you're, you don't have real freedom of your heart and mind, you're caught with your lusts and your interests. That's why. So what happens is the elite responds to the message by saying, we're going to get rid of you. What should happen is, they, the elite should respond by like, okay, we don't agree with you, but go and carry on. That's not what happens. Now, their transgression goes how far? Here's an example of how far. So this man comes from another part of the city, from far away from the city. He comes, look, people, this is the messenger of Allah. You know this is the truth. This has been made clear to you. So what do they do? He comes hurrying. He says, oh people, come on, let's follow the messengers. Look, let's, they, let's follow them. They're not asking you anything. They're not asking you for any money. They're not asking you for salary. They're not asking you for any wage. They're not asking you for any help. And they're, they're definitely guided. Look at their lifestyle. Look at the things that they're teaching us. Look at their message. Why is he able to say, Because it's clear what they're calling towards. Right? And they're guided. And why should I not worship the one who created me when in the end I have to go back to him anyway? Is it that you want that I should take anyone other than Allah as a God? If Allah wants something bad to happen to me, then the shifa of these idols and all this is not going to help, nothing will help me. Nor can it save me. And if I fell into these idols, because idol worship is basically a business. Then I would be clearly lost. I believe in your Lord. Meaning, I believe in Allah. Listen, Fasma'un, listen to me. Then they killed him. So their reaction to the message, when it comes to them, is what? Get rid of them. When the Haq tries to uh, stand up to Batil, Batil's response is not like, oh, okay, well, you know, you can coexist with us. No, Batil at the elite level want to eradicate Haq. Then what? So now, Allah, now he died. Now this is being told to the companions. What's happening with Quraysh, with you? You're going through torture, torture persecution. What Bilal went through, what Khabab bin Arth went through, what all the other companions were going through. This is not new to... This is not happening just to you. It's happened to the people before. So this is not... This suffering, Allah understands. Yes? You know, one interesting thing about this story that I always realize is Allah sent three messengers. Three messengers, yeah. And they got one person. <laughs> yeah, in. the one person that finally Only came. one person. The yeah. entire city was against them. This person who lives far away in a suburb 
comes running because he's the only believer. And, and it's really an indication to the prophet to tell him that, look, you have to have more sabr, right? That the, it's not easy for believers to believe in this message. Yeah, and you know, it used to put the prophet in depression. I mean, it's, why are they not believing in me? And not, but as a human being, you know, if you're feeling insult, they used to insult him. On top of, I mean, one is, I don't believe in you. The other is the personal insults, the personal injuries. We know that your heart shrinks from what they say about you. Because the Prophet's heart would shrink when they would say he's a liar, he's this, he's that. So anyway, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, and by the way, all reflections are more than welcomed. This is, Quran is, is not for one person. We, I would like people to give their input and their reflections on the ayat. And that way we have more to talk about. That's very Not talk about in the sense of talking, but more to reflect on. Human aspect. Yeah, this one's saying that just even the human aspect of, uh, of our Nabi, that he that was, he, was human. Human, yeah. he is not like he was depressed, he was happy, he was yeah. sad, everything else. He's not like a, a supernatural godly figure. figure. Yeah, like he, was, he was human. Okay, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jannah. Now a very important ayah is about to come about Allah's mood. Uh, I'll show that to you when it comes. Jannah. That man was told you go to Jannah. And he's in Jannah and he's saying, only if my people knew. They killed me in dunya, but look at where I am now. I made the right decision, I followed the messengers, I'm in Jannah. Jannah, you enter into Jannah. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي For what my Lord has forgiven me. He's forgiven my sins. وَجَعَلَ لِي مِنْ الْمُكْرَمِينَ And He's made me so honored here. Now Allah asks this question. This question is so powerful, so important. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَى قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ Allah says, did I send, an, after they killed him, did I send an army of angels to take revenge? No, and I was not going to ever do that either. And we did not send upon his nation min ba'dihi after they did this min jundim of an army min as from the sky meaning the angels. And this is not how we do things. We were, don't think this 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 is not doesn't work this way. You have to go through sufferings even if you have to give your life. No revenge is going to come next day because Allah loves you so much that next day, if they kill you, you're in Jannah, you've got your reward. But things will continue on earth just as they are. Until a certain appointed time. In كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدًا Look, it will be just one shout. صَيْحَةً وَاحِدًا فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ And they will be immediately extinguished. When the punishment of Allah will come, It'll come immediately. Now, this was for the previous nations. What happens in the Ummah of Muhammad regarding the rise and fall of the Muslim Ummah and the others that I will uh, discuss when this subject, inshallah, comes up. But, but Allah is destroying nations like Fir'aun and Thamud and Ad. This came to an end after Prophet Muhammad. Because now Prophet Muhammad was the last messenger and he was to all of humanity. So those divine rules now changed. First it was if there is a cancer in the body, Remove it. But now, with the last messenger, the rules have changed because of the mercy of the Prophet. And because of the mercy of the Prophet, nations don't get eradicated in the same way as before. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, Sorry. Um, I think I lost my tape. No, oh, okay, is this where I am? Yeah. No, 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 this comes many times, hold on. Okay. Okay. No, sorry. Ayah number 29. Okay, then. Ayah number 29? Yes. In Canada, in the same way, they will be extinguished. Yeah, now this is Allah's tone. I said my messengers. They make the things clear, they ask for miracles, I give them the miracles, they still don't listen. Now this is Allah's response about humanity. 
Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. You know hasra? Hasrat is a good thing. Ibad means my servants. Mere bandho pe kya hasrat hai? Kya, kya, what's wrong with them? Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Ma ya'tihim min rasulin. No messenger comes to them. Koi mera nabi nahi aata unke paas. Illa kyanu bihi yastahzi'un. So I say ki uska istihzaa wa muzakura. Take him non-seriously. Make him into a jest. I send my messengers, you ask for proofs, you say, okay, if you're a prophet, do this for us. I do that for them. And they still don't, they're still stubborn. What's wrong with these human beings? Huh? Since we're talking about believers and non-believers, right? Like, it might be a little off topic, but not really. I was just having a conversation with a couple of my friends the other day. And, uh, you know, since Allah chooses who He chooses and He exempts, who he, whom he exempts, uh, you know, these, these Muslims, you know, in, in these days, you know, you, you've got Christians, there's a person who's born in a Christian family, and, you know, it's not his fault that he was born in a Christian family. So, we've been through this in the beginning, remember? Allah says it's not their fault, yeah. the forefathers, and, and this topic will come again, and then I'll talk on this topic. All right. When this ayah comes, well, I'll go over again, I went over this uh, the uh, yesterday with the Rahman, but I'll go over it today. Yeah. Because people have a little bit of misconception what will happen with the people that don't know. This is why I try to make it very clear. In the time of the Prophet, everyone knew. That's very different from today. So, those people that don't know are essentially the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is we don't punish unless. A messenger's message has reached the people. No, they, these people, these people in our, like from Google and all, you know, from technology, they know about Islam. But most people, they follow, you know, they, you know, they follow their religion. That's how it is. Like even though they see proofs and all, most Christians are gonna stay Christians because, you know, their no. Even churches, if you Google, you get all the negative things yeah, first. You know, their churches, their 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 fathers, you know, their you know their figures, they're gonna tell them, you know, they're right. And you know, and they're not stupid people, so you know they're gonna believe that that's you know their right, and they're they're gonna keep on believing that. So you know, if you, if you talk about you know, like the other day, my dad was having a conversation with you, and you like you know all these prayers like popular to Islam, you know this is good, but the main they all lead to being a good human being, and being a human good human being is the main abada. So if a Christian is a good human being, and he's doing all the things, you know, he's a, he's an honest person, he's giving. Uh, you know, he treats people right, and he, he treats his wife, his family members, every, you know, all the hakuks, he does it. You know, what's going to happen to him? You know, is he, is he straight going to go to hell because he doesn't believe in Allah? But, you know, it's not his fault that he was born in a Christian family, so I always wonder that. And, you know, what's so there are two, three things. Number one. Is there a special skill? Number one, he does believe in Allah. I mean, he believes in that I mean, he believes God, in Allah, but, but he doesn't believe in Prophet. So, he's right. like, I, okay. I think so plus they have this trinity, like, you know, he's not solely believing in Allah. He's believing in the... The Holy Ghost, the Father, Holy Ghost, and um, Allah. Yeah. I mean, I believe there should be a different skill to them, I think. Like, no, okay, so I'm coming to that. Yeah. If the person believes in God, in Allah, <coughs> the same way Luqman, who was not a messenger, nor any message of a messenger came to him, nor did any book of Allah reach him, but he with his own wisdom and his own fitra, good nature, reached the conclusion there must be a God. Allah mentions him in Quran in a positive context. If somebody reaches the conclusion there is God, but he doesn't know the truth, he doesn't know Islam, okay, he will most likely, inshallah, be saved in the day of judgment. But, let me also add this. This idea, the, uh, this is one point that you're mentioning, but the other point that you're mentioning actually is a little bit off. When people say, I'm a good person, I don't hurt anybody, I'm so nice, this is exactly the problem. Everybody thinks that they're a good person. There's not a single person in the world that thinks that they're bad. Imam, there are people, I mean, I, I interact with families. There are these white Christian families who take care of their parents. They do everything oh, yeah. that a Muslim yeah. should yeah, absolutely. Be really be doing. Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely, you know? yes. Their belief, the only thing in their belief is Jesus is their savior. Yeah. And like, you know, they believe in the Trinity. So I don't know what will happen with them. That's, That's what I'm saying. There has to be a different scale. There is a hadith there has of the to be Prophet. A different scale that God is judging them on a different scale. Right. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. That well, they're also that. thinking that judge is, uh, God is judging them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're fearful they're, they're, of God. They're, they're, they're Can I put my two cents here? Yes, I think of course. our job in a Muslim is not to make money. Our job is to, to do da'wah, basically. 
Yeah, it is what it is. What, what is not your job? If you are, if you are in your iman, your job is to get that message across to the people. That's what you're supposed to do. On the day of judgment, some people would complain to Allah that we never knew the truth. But then there was a this my friend, like he 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 uh, he sent me a message, a uh, uh, text message, and and the message there was there's a verse in Quran which says that the kafirs are gonna go to hell. And then I was like, find me a verse, and he did he did find me one. Maybe you can verify. Not fears will go to hell. No, the kafir, the the kafar will go to hell, because now yeah, okay, was, let me was, explain something. Yeah, what, what is that in called? Islamic law. Kafir means one thing, in Qur'an kafir means something else. In the Islamic state, when there's a khilafah, or there's an Islamic empire, or Islamic law, kafir means you're not Muslim. Kafir means you're not Muslim. Okay. 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 That's the legal status a person has. He's not Muslim, he's denied being Muslim. Mm -hmm. In Qur'an, kafir means the one not who denies Islam. It's a very important point. In Qur'an, the word kafir means the one who opposes Islam. In the Quran, because the terminology seems the same, but it's not the same. <coughs> Legal, because when everybody became Muslims, so now they needed a court system to decide who's Muslim. You know, how, how are you going to classify the citizens? So the way you're going to classify the citizens is Muslims and non-Muslims. That simple. You don't even say Ahlul Kitab in the court system. The Ahlul Kitab is Quranic terminology. In the Islamic law, you're Muslims, not Muslims. Muslims Non-Muslims who have to give jizya, non-Muslims who have to give no jizya. Now, kafir, kul ya kafirun, this is referring to the people that are opposing the Prophet. Not the people that are the silent majority that's watching. Okay, Muhammad is saying this, they're doing this. They're torturing the Prophet, they're doing this. Those people that are in the middle, they are called the people of jahiliyyah. They're in a state of, they don't know what's the truth. Majority of the people accepted Islam when the Prophet took over and they're like, okay, well That's what we thought if Muhammad is right. He's gonna win the battles And he's gonna take Allah will give him victory since he says God is with him Right, so in our case today The people that oppose Islam we can call them kafir in the truest sense From the Quranic sense The word kafir also has another meaning which means to be ingratitude, but I'm not gonna go into that right now Yeah, but just just I want, to, I want to make sure we get this right. Do you see this? He sent me this. This is the translation. It says... Right. And then the meaning is... Yeah. So those people that, that oppose Islam and oppose the truth after knowing it is the truth, they will be in the jahannam. But they, they, all these, most Christians do. They do oppose the Islam. But do they know that it's the truth? I mean, yeah, that's, that's the question, right? right? If they know in their heart that it is the truth, and then they... Let me also, they don't know in their heart. They let let, me, also, right. let so me also... Know, they don't want to say, I, I know you mentioned Islam, Islam, but I also that's want to... That's a good point. We can't... But they, they, they believe in their heart. They believe in their heart. They believe in their heart. They're doing everything right. They're taking care of their parents. They're doing everything like a good person. I don't want to object them, basically. I mean, what's the order that's going to happen to those people? See, let me also... This answer will come, actually... The answer to this question will come in this same surah towards the end. Because that when that ayah is there, I can discuss this in detail. Okay? Over there, I can discuss this in detail, but I will say well, this. Why, why you are scared of saying that our belief is that they are going to hell? What is the problem saying that? No, there's no problem there's saying no that if that's the case. Yes, because if our, our belief is that if you do not believe in Allah, right, and then if you do not believe in Islam, and you say, then you are going to hell, they are our religion. You know, I don't, I that's don't, what I said. I said I the, not, minimum, I the minimum if exception. If you should ask him, you should ask him, you tell this is our belief. If you do not believe in Allah and he say, he say, he say, there is no, if you believe it, you will go to hell. Yeah, the Quranic, the Quranic view about human nature, this, maybe I should clarify this. There is a very good story uh, one of the Muslim scholars wrote just to make this point, so it will make my point easy. If there is a person born in an island, just a normal person born in an island, if you want to have a frame of reference, think of the Aborigines in, Af in Australia. Like just anybody born in nature. A person lives in, in the island all his life. 
According to Islam, if the person is living in the island, he's in a natural state, like the people were in the desert in the time of the Prophet. And if he's a good person, then he's automatically going to know that there is a God. There's power one, power. 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 And the story goes on that this person then leaves the island, he finds a way to make a boat, he leaves the island, and goes to land. And when he goes to the land, and he sees there the azan is going on, and the people are praying. And when those people explain to him, this is what we believe, we believe in one God and we worship him. He would find no hesitation in his mind, in his heart, from his experiences in the island to his now coming to the land. When they explain to him, we believe in one God and we do this, it would be totally like a natural <coughs> transition for him. What I mean by that is that people that... The center of having a good nature, the center of having a good nature is the belief in Allah. The center of it. To say, because, let me put it the other way. If you're not, if you don't believe in Allah, right? If you don't believe in Allah, then you don't believe there's right and wrong. You can't. On what basis do you say there's right and wrong if there's no Allah? So can we relate what you're saying to, to, to this day and age with... So if there is Christian, okay. So if there are two, three things. Number one, number one. A Christian may worship God with many different names, meaning whatever names, right? But when you put a, a bullet to somebody's head, and they were, like, if I put a bullet to your head and say, and you're praying to God, who are you naturally going to pray to? You're going to pray to the one true God. That's just naturally what's going to happen, right? So what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times when people are in difficulty, they're in hardship, they're struggling, they're, they automatically, even Christians, I know this because my wife is a Christian, even Christians will, will call out to God. Just, it's just natural. You call out to God. Now, when it becomes clear to this person, look, what you have been worshipping is really God, even though you've been taught this thing, but when you're really worshipping, you worship naturally, you worship Allah. You see what I'm trying to say? You're taught that there's a Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, but when you're in difficulty and you really have to pray, your heart goes to worship what? To the one God. Because that's what's natural. When you explain to him this, and he understands this, and he still denies it, then that's a problem. Shirk is not something that God will ever forgive. That's no. what my understanding is. No, no, no. Yeah. Allah will never forgive so shirk if you Holy die Christ not doing yeah. tawbah for it. Right. So, having this concept of Trinity, from what my understanding is, is, is shirk. No, however, of course it is shirk. However Trinity good is shirk. that person is. I mean, again, as I said, like we deal with families in Harford County, I and mean, there's so many conservative people there. Some of the best-natured people you'll see, they take care of their parents, they, they do everything you'd like, you know, yeah. want to like, you know, do yourself. Uh -huh. But yeah, their, their basic practice. thing flaw is that, that Trinity they believe in. Yeah. So you're saying so, that because of that they will go to hell? I don't know. I think I think his point I think his point is that my point that is Christian that, Christian is also like believe the God, okay? But what is his fault? What is his fault if he's born in yeah, a Christian my, society? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's that, that's why I'm and trying to end my answer is that if a person that, has Salim al Fitra, good nature, he doesn't know about prophets, he doesn't know about Islam, but he has Salim al Fitra. <coughs> His heart will naturally connect with God. Okay. What's that? So, okay. The, the, okay. Forget about Christians. I have Indian Hindu friends yeah. who Same. are so good, yeah. like personal on a personal level. Buddhist, whatever. Yeah. You know, they take care of their parents. They do everything, but their basic flaw is they they don't that's, believe yeah. in one God. And they do believe in the supreme God, by the way, yeah. but they have other, you know, uh, gods that they ascribe to as well. The simple way to put it is. I won't go into the human nature aspect of it. The simple way to put it is, if they worship other gods besides God, they are in trouble. Yeah, but okay, so that's, those are the But sometimes, but like, those are the Buddhists and Hindus, okay, so that's... But over here, I want to say, I also want to add, you know how you're saying that they're good human beings? I agree. But there's certain things, like for example, drinking alcohol. You can be a good human being, but if you don't stop yourself from certain things, like uh, like going to the bar, drinking <coughs> alcohol, so on and so forth, you're bound to make some mistakes. Yeah, so the Buddhists and the Hindus are a different category, but you talk about Christians, 
Muslims and, and Jewish people, right? They all believe in Allah, and, and I just can't grab, I just can't wrap my head around it that if they're if they're born in a certain religion, and they're good human beings, and God is the one who chooses, who, who we are ch we are the chosen ones. We say it all the time, we're the chosen ones, and they're the exempt ones. And it's a baby coming in a Christian and, and a Jewish family, and of course he's gonna stick with this family. That's just human nature. According to the Quran, yeah. Only those people are liable who have received the message. They have, and I know they have received so the message. So at the basic this level, this oh, what, what, what you say? they this. have received the message. No, I don't agree with that. I just can't grasp my head. How do you say they've received the message? They have. I mean, you know, we, we're right next to them. You know, they receiving them. message from Fox News is not receiving message. I mean, How, what, is the, what, is the, what is the criteria to get the message? What is the, what is the way? Dawa. I mean, we see, huh? they see that we are Muslims. No, right? I mean, they so see that. Da dawa means, dawa means, like, Dawa means, the, like, the, the Ulma describe is that they have to study Islam. They have to they find, they have to, we they have to give them they answers have to compare, at a social level. They have to compare Bible and Quran. So are we liable, for example, like, like, like we work with people? Yeah. We work with people. Can they, on their judgment, like grab our thing or what they can do about this? They will do that. They will do that, right? That's also said. My question is that. Being, he, he, from his question, that my, being a human being, I never study Bible. You know, you know, you yeah. see, because it's human nature, so, you so, stick with yeah, yeah. You So time. how you expect for a Christian that he yes. can? I don't expect that. You I expect. That. I expect this. I, mean, I expect to do. Listen, 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 listen. If you want to know, I expect us to do what the Prophet did, which is to create noise. We are creating a noise. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not being funny. I'm. I'm I'm when we, I say we're creating, we're, we don't, we're not creating a positive noise for the little that we have. We need to create noise in society so that Islam becomes the conversation. What is, like the Prophet was criticizing Abu Lahab, saying why are you killing the baby girl? What are our issues that we can bring to the table that will become the, the discussion of the nation to say this is what Islam teaches? It's not about the individual doing research on the Qur'an and the Bible, it's not that. It's about when you're doing da'wah, it becomes a social phenomenon. It is, becomes a social movement, it becomes a social discussion. Everyone's discussing it in the universities, in the radios. You have made something an issue. For example, if Muslims raise the issue that America is unjustly taxing its citizens, for example. This could be one issue we can raise. That Islam is against this, this much taxing, this much is against Islam. And if we raise this and people learn about Islam, then they're, now they're learning about it. The Prophet didn't teach people individually. The Prophet taught, taught people socially. If you start doing da'wah individually, you know how long it takes to, change, to convert an average person who's interested in Islam? takes about six months of talking back and forth and back and forth and finally he takes the shot. If you're going to go through the individual process, that will take you, will, you'll never really go anywhere. You need to create a social movement, yes. So according to, uh, I see what you're saying and I understand that. So what I'm saying, to wrap this up, you know, to wrap it up. So according to the current teachings or current dawah or the current level of dawah they have, you know, they, the resources they have, according to that, if they're good human beings and they're, and they're doing, they're, they're pretty much doing all the right things, will they go to heaven or hell? You don't to, know. Can I, can I say yeah, go ahead. So two, two things but that I, same person can things. come and grab you and say that he didn't tell me the truth. Two things I think we should realize. Yeah. Number one, that Allah is the most just. Right. Yes. So whatever we think is just. Thank you. That brings me back to the basics. He is going to be more just than and he can yeah. ever be on this one. Yeah, and, that, that's and, then, and, then, and then the second thing is, you don't have to worry. We don't have to judge. Yeah. We don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it to Jannah. So how can I judge anyone? Yeah, right? yeah, but Muslims say all the time. Because, yeah. because look, we don't know the future knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. And we don't know the judgment of Allah. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to judge individual people and say to them that you're going to hell. Oh, we're not allowed to do that, by the way. You cannot so judge any you person. Mean, you're about you hell. saying to them. Maybe that person is going to be better than you. We don't know. Exactly. 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 And, and that Christian is, is also a creation of Allah. He yes, loves his creation. But Muslims yeah. say it all the time. I heard it so many times in mosques that, oh, we are, uh, kafirs are going to hell. You know, I have I heard it many times. You know, like a, a kafirs in the sense of the time of the Prophet. Those people that openly and fiercely opposed Islam. 
Yes. Th there's a difference between like you know your friend and Pamela Geller, you know. Like Ibrahim, uh, <laughs> Ibrahim is a prophet of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He's a he's a he's a one he's a like uh, father. <coughs> yeah. So what you every know, one came in him. Like, this, these topics are actually coming ahead. He's, he's a fish or something like that. And then one person, he came as a carpet. He has 70 years. When he came and we got this Prophet Ibrahim and the time that he did it. And then they tell him, and he stayed and he put one. And then. He asked me, where are you from? He said, I'm from this, this, this. And he said, are you coming? How are you going to eat it? And then he left. When he went, and then Allah said, Rasulullah Sama, Jibreel Ali Salaam. And he said, Ya Prophet Salaam, Ya Nabi Allah. Allah said, this person, he never, he never, he never failed on him for 70 years. But I'm still giving life. So why are you? Why are you judging? Yeah. Why are you judging? Yeah. Are you judging? And then the Prophet Ibrahim, he went to him. Okay, so I am. And he, I am and he said, because of you, Allah want to punish me. Yeah, you, you should exchange yeah, with him. Yeah. You give him the Bible, you say, okay, I'll bring the Bible, you bring the Bible. So I number thirty, I I have yes, I number thirty answers. The uh, the surah is going to answer your question, but the ayahs just haven't come. I number thirty says, Ya hasrat al ala al ibad. Woe on my servants. No messenger comes to them except that they mock him. Now this is one, yani Allah is saying, Ya hasrat an ala al-ibad. Lekin ismi ayat mein Allah ki bhi hasrat hai. Ki ye kya hai? Acha, isi tada ek war ayat hai ki, wo mein dikhaun ga jab aayi. Alam yarao kam ahlakna qablahu min al-qurun. Have you not considered how many we have destroyed before them? This is the Sunnah of Allah. When a city is destroyed, it never comes back. Except one city, Jerusalem. Jerusalem has a special significance. Whoever controls Jerusalem controls the world. And all of them will be brought in front of me on the Day of Judgment. Meaning this is clear. I want to make a note on the lighter. Why don't you tell all the Taliban and everyone, just co-control Jerusalem and you will cover the whole thing, you know? Just give them this ayah. <laughs> they don't need to worry about anything else. <laughs> now I have to cut that piece out from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> you just ruined all of my trip, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already you. said it's just a lighter. Oh, man. Like, why why I'm does the bother come? That was the heaviest thing to say. There's nothing light about it. There's nothing light about it. Why bother about this? I want to come in front of the camera. Just go to Jerusalem and you can tell them that they are not going to be able to do it. Just go to Jerusalem. Do you want to tell them that they are not going to be able to do it? Now, from here, after discussing this issue that we send our messengers, they make it absolutely clear, but you still treat them so badly and so harshly and kill them. Even now, we have sent Muhammad, you're doing the same thing, even though he's made it clear. Now, from here, the topic changes to the ayat of Allah. This first part in Quran is called Tazkir bi ayyamillah. Tazkiyah with reminding you of the history and what happens and how people react and human behavior, basically. Tazkiyah bi ayyamillah. Now is this topic is called Tazkiyah bi ayatillah. Now Allah will say, look at my look at my universe, look at my what I've created. And Alam yaro, so Allah says, wa ayatullahumul ardul ta'ahiyinaha. A sign for them is the earth when it is dead, it is given life. And it brings forth from it grain, and you eat from it. Now, this can have two meanings. One is the normal, every year there's land that dies, and then the water comes, and then the crops come, and we eat from it. And the other is a little bit more, uh, when the, before the earth had vegetation, there was a time when the earth was dead. After the dinosaurs died, when the volcano happened, and every, the earth was dead. And then after the earth was dead, then there came a second stage after that in which 
then the earth had vegetation and greenery, and so then people now eat from it. So both of it is correct. A sign for them is, the dead earth. And the reason that I like the first interpretation is because if you look at it, it seems to be one word. The dead earth. Meaning the earth was dead, a stage in which the earth was dead, before it had life. So there was a stage in which the earth had no life. So in this sense, this is a scientific uh, point the Qur'an makes. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ الْأَرْضُ الْمَيْتَةَ أَحْيَيْنَاهَا We gave life to this dead. How did things go from, uh, from being uh, non-inorganic, they're dead, to life? How did life start? This phenomenon itself is miraculous. It's very improbable. How do things go from normal, non-living molecules to living molecules? It's a very big leap in, 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 in nature. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ الْأَرْضُ الْمَيْتَةَ أَحْيَيْنَاهَا وَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهَا حَبَّةً And then from there came out grains. فَمِنْهُ يَأْكُلُونَ And now you're eating it. وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا جَنَّاتٍ مِنْ نَخِيلٍ وَعْنَابٍ وَفَجَّرْنَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْعِيُونَ And then what else happened? Not only you got grains to eat, but there are gardens with palm trees and grapevines, and then he's caused uh, rivers and canals and streams of water to flow, and the earth was dead, and now look, the earth is alive. وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا جَنَّاتٍ مِنْ نَخِيلٍ وَعْنَابٍ وَفَجَّرْنَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْعِيُونَ لِيَأْكُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ وَمَا عَمِلَتُ أَيْدِيهِمْ أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ And now that they have these fruits to eat and uh, وَمَا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ uh, And their hands are not the ones that produced this is one translation. Meaning it wasn't your hands that did this, Allah did this. وَمَا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ also means and you have these fruits and also what your hands have earned, meaning besides what you eat from the, gra uh, uh, from the grains and stuff. Now this is another scientific point. Per uh, uh, perfection is for Allah. The one who created a pair for everything. Everything in, the uni in this earth, everything in this universe has a pair. Starting at the very high level, there's matter and then what? Antimatter. Antimatter, at the very high level. There's electrons, protons. You know, everything has an equal and opposite. Everything in nature. In fact, there's a professor in the University of Maryland. Her name is Fatima Jackson. She's an anthropologist. She became Muslim on this ayah. She's there still, I think, as a professor right now. Uh, but she became Muslim on this ayah because she spent a long time looking for something that doesn't have a pair. Something in the universe that's alone, and doesn't have a pair. Even a cell, a cell is there, and it gives birth to its pair, the daughter cell, which Quran calls the pair. So anyway, uh, Allah says, Subhanallah, that Allah has created a pair for everything that comes out of the earth, meaning of the growth of the plants from the earth, and themselves, and of what they don't know. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ اللَّيْنِ And another sign for them is the night. نَسْلَقُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ we, uh, we remove from it, meaning we move it in the day into the night and the night into the day. So, uh, so Allah says, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ اللَّيْنِ نَسْلَقُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ And then they're, when this process happens and they go into darkness. وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْلِيلِ مُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا Again, very important scientific point. وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْلِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا And the sun is moving in its orbit. Allah is saying the sun is moving to its appointed term. Every sun has its death. From which where it becomes, you know, the, first it becomes a red giant. Do you know the phases of the sun? It first becomes a red giant. Probably you young kids are probably studying this at this age. Do you know what a red giant is? What? Yes. Then what happens after it's a red giant? It's a, it's a, it's like a white dwarf. A white dwarf? But how does it become a white dwarf from a red? Over the years? Well, over many billions and millions of years, it, the sun becomes bigger and bigger until it's a red giant. And then it, it just it, it, it collapses and becomes a black hole, or it becomes a white dwarf, meaning a small planet, like a planet-like thing. Anyway. So, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْلِيلِ مُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا And the sun runs 
towards its stopping point. There comes a point where the stop, the life of the sun ends. And over there, it either becomes a black hole there, or it becomes a white dwarf there. And that's it. Okay, what Shams al Tajini mustaqarrin laha dhalika taqdeer al Aziz al Alim. And this is the taqdeer, this is the determination of al Aziz al Alim, who is al Aziz with authority and knowledge. Now, this is a miracle that we don't realize nowadays. But if you ever look at the moon, I'm sure you've all experienced this. You, the moon is like a calendar. I mean, literally, and you know the moon is always on the dark side. It's very hardly ever on the light side. You ever notice this? You ever have a day where you don't see the moon? Now, the other side of the earth is also seeing the moon. And your side of the world is also seeing the moon. Because the time when the moon is on the other side, it's going through the ocean. It's actually on the ocean side. It's on the, mm -hmm. the Atlantic and the Pacific side. So by the time you're moving like this, and the, the moon is also moving like this. But it's moving in such a way that it's 99% it's of the time going to be on the dark side. Whether this side of the day or that side of the day. Because in the middle is that ocean. And then on top of that, the moon has dust that reflects, that dust, you can look this up, on, it has ray, dust, the dust of the moon is specifically made to reflect back light. Reflect back light. If it was another planet and it didn't have that dust, it wouldn't be as bright. You ever notice how bright the moon is? It's like it has its own light almost. So, and the third thing is, when the moon is on that side, it starts off very small, Day one, day two, and the people of the olden days, they can tell oh, this is day four moon, this is day five moon, day fifteen moon. Allah has made a natural calendar through the moon cycle. He has made a natural calendar that you can tell, you, you can have a calendar basically with the moon. So this is what this is referring to. Like uh, in, in my country, people traveling with the moon. Yeah. In the Sahara Desert. Yeah. And then in the star. This is yeah. Yeah. Navigation. Yeah, navigation. And the moon, we have given it its determination of its phases for its calendar. Allah has made it sure that it's always on your side, whether you are on this side of the world or that side of the world. It goes through its stages until it's like a very small date stock. Okay, there is a reason this is there, I can't go into details right now. The Shamsu Yambali Laha and Tudrika Kamar. And it is not for the sun to over uh, to to overdo the moon or the meaning this a balance in this whole system. It's gonna it all moves in a very uh, smooth way. There, there's no roughness in any of this. The Shamsu Yambali Laha and Tudrika Kamar Wala Lay Rusabi Kun Nahar nor that the night can overcome the day. They all go in there. And here, another scientific point. Everybody notice this ayah. Everything that is in this, all celestial, all celestial bodies, which is the sun and the moon and the orbits, orbits and the comets and the planets, everything. All of the celestial uh, uh, bodies are swimming in their orbits, are floating in their orbits, are moving in their orbits. Sabbaha yusabbihu is this. This word is subhanAllah and saying Sabbaha means to be at a certain level and you're moving at that. You're just at that level. So Allah says here, Kullu falakin yasbahun wa ayatul lahum and this is also very important. Wa ayatul lahum anna hamalna dhurriyatahum fil fulk al mashhoon and a sign for them is that we will carry they're the seeds, meaning we carried Nuh والسلام, in the boat. By the way, I don't know if you know this, the boat of Nuh والسلام, has been found. And this ayah where it says it is a sign for them, has been proven to be true because we found the boat. It is in Mount, called Mount uh, Ararat. Ararat. And uh, it is it's as big as seven football fields. It's on top of a mountain. You can look this up. Uh, the mount, it's specific, it's, it's specifically called Mount Judi. It's in, it's in Turkey. It's in Turkey. Yeah. 
Yes. But they're not sure, though. That's not no, 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 no. No, they weren't sure about Ararat, but about Judy, they're 100% sure. Really? Yeah, 100% sure. Even for Judy, they were saying that there's a suspicion that that's what it is, but they're not confirmed that that's Well, I mean, you can never be confirmed in the sense that you can be confirmed. But it's the ship on top of a mountain, as Qur'an describes. By the way, it's in Qur'an that it's on a mountain. And it's in the location, Qur'an says, ala uh, judi, uh, this is the word judi is from Qur'an. So it's on the mountain of judi, on that mountain, on, on the mountain itself, and it's seven football fields long. So you can uh, consider the probability of it not being so, I mean, yourself. Seven football it, fields, I mean, can you just imagine the scale even today? 700, 700, yards. Like 700 yards. 700 yards. 700 yards. So? There's a big like a big... No, no, it's very big. And you know, it's all usually covered with ice and only in summertime for a very short time. What is that called? The ice. What is the ship called? The Ark of Noah? The Ark of Noah. Just look it up on the internet and you'll see it. Yeah, if ever I have time, I will give you some documentation on this. It's very, very interesting. So that ship, by the way, the story of Nuh is in every tradition. Everything from Homer's book of the Odyssey, the Nuh's Ark is in there. The Hindus, you know, they have the concept of the Mahanu. They believe that a man from a boat came to India. This is the story. Mahanu was a man who came from here and then Abraham, Brahman is also from the word Ibrahim, by the way. I won't go into the details of this. But also, the Christians, of course, they have the story of Nuh. Japanese have the story of the Nuh. They celebrate the ship. I don't know if you've seen their celebrations where they carry that ship. They carry this boat. And they also have the story that human beings, we came here on a boat and so on and so forth. Christians have it. Jews have it. The, the Japanese have it. Almost every single tradition... If you just look this up on Wikipedia, you'll find every single tradition has the story of the, the Ark in one shape or another. Sometimes the names are different and the stories are a little uh, different, but the idea of coming on the boat is in most of the traditions. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And then in, in that, it's not just that He created the boat, but after that, we created for them, meaning the likes of this boat, the, or boats themselves, you were, human beings were able to make it. If we wanted, we would have made them غرق. If we wanted, we could have caused them not to float. Instead of floating, it could have just gone down. And then there would be no one to respond to their shout, meaning their call for prayers to Allah. وَلَا هُمْ يُنْتِذُونَ Nor would they be saved. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنَّا Except by our mercy. وَمَدَاءً إِلَاهِينَ But this is by our mercy that this is allowed to happen for an appointed time. إِلَا مَدَاءً إِلَاهِينَ You have some utility, some benefits up to a certain point in time. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ Now, those same politicians that Allah was referring to, that they reject the message. Because it's usually the elite that reject the message at this stage when this surah is revealed. Now when it is, you, now their character is being discussed. And when it is said to them, When it is said to them, fear Allah. When it, this is said to them, you know how I said, Ya Hasratan al Ibad? Now, this is the second one, the tone of Allah. Okay, they denied my messengers. My messengers, they denied. Okay, you denied my messengers, you even killed my messengers. But then, how are you denying all my signs? Everything that I've done for you, how are you denying that? So, over here is another Hasra from Allah. The tone is, the tone is, so the wordings, the asnub of the ayah is the same. Over there is mustahzi'un, over here is mu'ridun. No sign of my sign comes to them except they turn away from it. They give it a blind eye. They don't see it. 
So messengers you hear, signs you see. You can't, you're, you're deaf, you can't hear the messenger. And de you're dumb, you're de and blind, you can't see the signs. Like Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, he's uh, they tell him, Simina wa asayna. Yes, 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 Simina wa asayna. Wa ma ta'tihim min ayatim min ayati rabbihim illa kan wa anha mu'ridin. Now this is their character. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رُوَكَكُمُ اللَّهُ When it is said to them, okay, why don't you give in the cause of the poor? Allah has given you so much, give to the poor. قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those people who disbelieve, they say to the believers, قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنُوا تُعِمُوا مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ وَتَعْمَلُوا You want us to feed the ones Allah didn't want to feed? These lazy people, these people who are a weight on our society, you want us to feed them? It's better to get, you know Robert Spencer? That's what he said. The weak and the poor, better to get rid of them. This is how these people think. And by the way, don't think these are words. There are people who think this way. There are people who think and they think they're religious when they think this the way. Why should we? Do you know one of the one of the differences between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party is that what is the dem the, the Democrat Party wants to help the poor. And this is what it's a lot a lot of it's based upon the whole welfare system and making the government bigger and putting more burden on the government. This is what the Democrat Party wants to do. But on the other side, what does the Republican Party want? Down. They want to do trickle down. Just give money to the rich. And down. Whoever it trickles down to the to the to the people that. What do they feel about the rest? Why don't you have a job? You're lazy. You know where this comes from? It comes from the 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 ideas of the recent ideas of Christianity. Basically, I'm not going to go into the details. But if you're poor, you're poor because you're lazy. Not because you had a bad situation or bad luck. You're poor. Because you're lazy. Many, many Christians feel this. Many Christians believe this. If you don't live a productive life, you're sinning, which is true. If you don't live a productive life, you're sinning. But they take it to the extreme, to the point of saying that we shouldn't help the poor, basically. When it is said to them, spend on which Allah has given to you. Should we feed those who Allah didn't desire us to, who Allah Himself didn't feed? In antum illa fi You are just astray. You don't know what you're talking. You want us to feed? Allah ne khudun ko ni diya tham jinne. Wa yuluna mata hadal wagu. Then they say, when when this promise will come, the day of judgment. You talk about day of judgment. They used to say to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Oh, there's a day. Okay, bring it." Ajay, truly, I can. Liao, liao, come up now. This is what they say to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Liao, bus liao, liao. Kya amin? Dus saal se jo hai durate re. Oh, kya matayi, kya matayi. Okay, then bring it. وَيَقُولُنَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ They say, when will this promise come? إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you're truthful. They ask the believers, the kuffar, they ask the believers, that when will this promise of the Day of Judgment come, when you are, when, if you are truthful? Then Allah answers, مَا يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَّا سَيْحَةً وَاحِدًا It will, they do not have, there's nothing to wait. When it comes, it will come. مَا يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَّا سَيْحَةً وَاحِدًا And when it comes, it will be one shout. It will seize them. That shout will seize them. وَهُمْ يَخِسِّمُونَ They will be disputing with one another, arguing with one another, and the punishment comes all of a sudden. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِيَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَحْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Then on that day, when that happens, they will not be able to have any, uh, they won't be able to have any instructions. And they will not have any return to their family. Meaning when it comes, it will come. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِيَةً وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَحْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And on that day when the trumpet is blown. When the trumpet is blown. فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاتِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَمْسِلُونَ Then they will come out of... Now this is the scene of the Day of Judgment. Now they're coming out of the Day of... Now this will begin to answer your question now. 
When they come out of their graves, the Prophet said, from every grave, 70 graves will come out. Because the earth will be made flat. People will be coming out of their graves. And by the way, uh, and when the trumpet is blown, I don't have time right now, but you know what the shape of the universe is? It is in the shape of a... What is it, Fasi? I've shown that to you. <laughs> the, sh the universe is in the shape of what? The Doritos. Huh? No, that's not <laughs> The, the universe is in the shape of a horn, a sur, a trumpet. The universe is in the shape of a trumpet. So it's possible that on one end Israfil is waiting because the hadith says that the, the mouth of the trumpet is in his mouth. He's waiting and he's going to blow something and the whole universe will be affected by it. And then what will happen will happen. Meaning the whole universe, universe will change at, at some level at that time. And I heard that uh, Shrafi, uh, he's you know holding the horn. He's not even blinking because he, you know, he's waiting that any moment we'll get the orders to blow the horn. You know, blow the horn. That's what I heard. So in Kanat illa sayhatan wahidatan fa idahum. Sorry. Wa nufiq bi sur fa idahum min al ajdati illa rabbihim yansilun. So they the sur will be broken, uh, blown, and then they will come out of their uh, graves. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا Then that, that day they will say, يَا وَيْلَنَا Oh, what a destruction to us. مَنْ بَعَثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا Who's raised us from our graves? From our sleeping places. We were here. Who raised us up? مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا هَذَا مَا Then that day it will be said, هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ الرَّحْمَانِ This is what Allah was promising you. Now you've been raised. هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ الرَّحْمَانِ وَصَدَقَ الْمُرْصَدُونَ And not only this is what Allah promised, but the messengers, they were also truthful. In Kanat illa sayyatan wahida, it will be just one blast. فَإِذَا هُمْ جَمِيُّ لَدَيْنَا مُحْتَرُونَ And they will be all brought before me, Allah says. There will be one blast, one blow, and they will be before me. Now this answers your question. فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُذْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا That day no soul will be wrong whatsoever. Shay'a, anything, no wrong. فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُذْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَلَا تُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And you will not be rewarded for except what you have earned. If you've earned something, you'll get rewarded for it. Except for what you used to do. Now the scene is being painted of Jannah and Jahannam. إِنْ إِنَّ الْأَسْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ يَوْمَ فِي شُهُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ On that day, the people of Jannah, they will be Enjoy the enjoying themselves. They will be occupied enjoying themselves. In the ashab al jannah al yom fi shughul infaqihun, hum wa azwajum fi dalal ala al araik yanzurun. They and their spouses, meaning you will be there, your wife will be there. You will be under the shades of the trees, and you will be sitting in couches, and you know you will have your private residential gardens, and you do whatever you want. So Allah says. هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون. For them will be fruits of every kind and whatever they want. And then what? The biggest thing. سلام قول من رب الرحيم. That day, Allah. One day of those days, Allah will say سلام. Peace. قول a statement من رب الرحيم from your Lord most merciful. The charms of Jannah will increase until you actually see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمْتَاذُ الْأَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ So on the other side, it will be said, Stand today you apart. So okay, on, on, today you, you're going to be apart. You're going to stand separate. فَالْيَوْمَ وَمْتَاذُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ You will be separated today, oh, you criminals. You were criminals. أَلَمْ أَحَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمُ Did I not promise you, O children of Adam? أَلَّا نَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانَ That you don't worship shaitan. وَإِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَذُوهُ مُبِينَ And he is a clear, clear enemy to you. وَأَنِعْبُدُونِي And I told you, you have to worship me. وَهَذَا سِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ And this is the sirat, and this, worshipping me is sirat al-mustaqim. وَلَكَدْ أَذَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا and that shaitan, he had led so many astray amongst the people. أَذَلَّ الْكَثِيرَةِ 
Afalam takunu ta'atilun. Do you have no reason? Do you not see how many nations got destroyed? How many people got destroyed? How shaitan leads people astray? Hadihi jahannam. Now again, that was, this is the day of judgment. Now this is for the jahannam. Hadihi jahannam allati kuntum tu'adun. This is the hellfire you were promised. You used to make fun of this. Now, maza chakko is gone. In هذه جهنم جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون Burn in it today for what you used to deny because you were denying it. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمون أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون That day we will put a seal over their mouth and their hands will speak to us. So you won't, your mouth won't lie because your mouth will be stopped from talking. Your hands and your body parts will that used to sin will talk. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمون أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم and their 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 foot their feet their legs will bear witness وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون for what they used to earn ولو نشاء لما تصنع على عيونهم فاستبق السرّاد فأنا يبصرون and if we had willed we would have obliterated even their eyes and and they would then how would they find the path meaning of Allah سبحانه وتعالى saying on on that day وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَا تَصْنِعَ عَلَىٰ عَيُّنِهِمْ فَاسْتَرِقُوا السِّرَاطَ فَأَنَّا يُبْسِرُونَ وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَا سَخْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ مَكَانَتِهِمْ So when you denied, when you were denying the truth, when the messenger was saying, this is the truth, if you denied it, I would, I could have snatched away your eyes. Or, if we willed, we could have deformed you. Like the people of Bani Israel, some of them, they became monkeys, but that was just an exceptional case. وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَا تَصْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ مَكَانَتِهِمْ Right where you are, right where you're denying the Prophet. We could have just done something to you. وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَمَا سَخْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ مَكَانَتِهِمْ فَمَسْتَطَاءُ مُضِيًّا وَلَا يَرْجِعُونَ And then they wouldn't be able to proceed or return. وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُمْ نَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ Now this is for medical doctors. This is an important ayah. وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ Whoever we give life, then نُنَقِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ We reduce him in his creation. You reach a certain age, and then your bones become less thick. You become less. Your body becomes, your takhliq becomes less. Maybe something uh, even in the heart becomes less, and then you start having problems. Meaning, things diminish in your body. Your body starts to diminish, right? Besides bones, is what else starts diminishing? Everything. Really? Everything? The brain. The brain starts diminishing? Atrophy, yeah. So your brain starts diminishing. Shrinkage, kidney functions. No, okay, that's like if you have a problem, but it doesn't normally start. Yeah. As you age, it will. Every lung function. Even lung function. Even your height, you're gonna like you know. Right. Okay. So the backbone goes down and yeah. your. Wow. Okay. Waman nuammiruhu. Whoever we give life, nunak is fulfilled. In this you can understand in, even in Urdu, completely. Waman and whoever. Nu'ammir Umar. Just go on Umar the thing. Waman nu'ammir who? Nakis kehte na Urdu mein nakis. Kal ho na. Nuksan kehte na. Nuksan ho na. Nuks. The kal ho jata. Right? Nuks. Kal. Okay. Waman nu'ammir who nakis who? We cause him to diminish. Fi khalti. In his creation. When we give you life, you become diminished. أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Will you then not understand? You will not heed. وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعَرَ This is not poetry. We didn't teach Muhammad poetry. This is not poetry. وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ And it wouldn't be worthy to teach him poetry. He's being given Qur'an. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ وَقُرْآنُ مُبِينَ This is just a reminder and a clear Qur'an, a clear recitation. لِيُذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا Now this answers your question. The first was, Allah doesn't, Allah will not wrong anyone at all. Second is, this is now your question. لِيُذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا This is a warning to the people that are alive, whoever it reaches. It's not a warning if it doesn't reach. And whoever is alive. وَيُحِبَّ الْقَوْلُ وَعَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And it is a, you can say a decree, حق, a decree or a, against, those people who have denied. Those who have denied. 
أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِمَّا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِينَا أَنْعَامًا فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ Do they not see, do they not observe that we've created from, the, from, from our own hands? You can say this has different meanings, but I'm going to just... أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا خَلَقْنَا أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِمَّا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِينَا We have created for them with our own hands these cattle. Every aspect of a cattle you can use. The milk, the, the skin, the horns, every aspect of that cattle, it's like it's made for you. Everything in it is like as if made for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, where is it? Uh, uh, number 72. Oh, 72? Yeah. No, no, no. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ And they are their owners. Their owners, like even think of this, right? Out of all the animals that would be domesticated to human beings, why are those animals domesticated to us that give eggs, that give milk, like cow, like horses? Like, imagine if there was an animal that would be domesticated, but it's not useful to us at all. Right? I mean, if the process of evolution was completely an accident, then these animals that became domesticated to us, even like horses, for example, there is a symbiotic relationship. The horse needs the horseshoe. The horse needs a human being to put a horseshoe for it to function. It can function without a horseshoe. But it will not fully be able to function properly without that horseshoe. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fall sick, really. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِمَّا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِينَا أَنْعَامًا فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ وَظَلَّلْنَاهَا لَهُمْ فَمِنْهَا رُكُوبُهُمْ وَمِنْهَا يَعْكُلُونَ And we have tamed it for them, and from you eat it, and you also ride it. And you have so many benefits from this one creature. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِيُمْ وَمَشَارِمْ And then also from it you have manaf, you have benefits, you get profits, maybe you're doing something. You also have drinks. أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ You not thank Allah. وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً Now this ending is very strong. I will explain this. وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً They have taken a God other than Allah. لَعَلَّهُمْ يُنصَرُونَ So that they will help them. These other idols and everything that they've taken. لَا يَسْتَطِئُونَ نَصْرَهُمْ They have no power to help them. وَهُمْ لَهُمْ جُنْدٌ مُحْدَرُونَ And they themselves, meaning they have no benefit, is meaning. لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محترون فلا يحزنك قومه. Oh Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, don't be sad over what they're saying, because it has to do with the beginning. Remember, Allah, the prophets being told, you're definitely a messenger. You've conveyed the message. Then Allah says, look, we even sent those three prophets there. See what they did. Then it changed to the ayat of Allah after that. And then after that, the scene of Jannah and Jahannam came. Now this is the ending. فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ O Muhammad, don't be sad over this. This, they always do this. فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ إِنَّ نَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ We know what they're hiding. We know what's in their hearts and what they show. What they show to you is one thing, but what's in their heart is something. They know this is the truth now. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُمْ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِينٌ مُبِينٌ He ayed do you not see the man, from Allah's perspective, try to think from Allah's perspective. Do you not see the man, we created him from sperm and now he's arguing about us. He's arguing, I created him from sperm and today he's arguing about me. Meaning me, Allah. Allah is saying, And then what else? Or hamayi hamari baalil masalid. He gives us examples. Allah says, giving me. He's trying to give me examples of how things should be. Well, why wouldn't God do this? And why would God do this? Right? Allah, I made you from sperm, and today you're a little bit big, and you're trying to tell me how things should be. Right? Wadarabalana masala wa nasiya khalqa, and he forgot what he how he was created himself from a drop of sperm. Qala man yuhi lidaba wa hi aramim. And he says, who will raise the dead when their bones, just, you know, bitter bones, and broken down bones? Allah responds, قُلْ يُحْيِ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ No, say, O Muhammad to them, he will give them life, 
the one who started them, who made them the first. Whoever made you the first time will give you life again. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ خَلْكٍ عَلِيمٍ And he is fully aware of his creation. Then Allah says, this is another interesting ayah. الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ This is another scientific point, by the way. الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا That tree, that through photosynthesis, it stores energy, the trees. And then you, that stored energy you get back when you make it into fire. That energy is there in the tree. You burn it, right? The fire comes out because the energy is in there, right? How does the energy get there? From the sun. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا The one who made from you from the green trees fire. He made فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوْقِدُونَ When you put fire, when you try to kindle it, it becomes fire for you. Who has made all this for you? It's made everything, every stage of human progress. Everything is perfect around you. When you're in a lower level, you just have cattle and just fire, and that's fine. And when you're higher level, you have now oil and minerals and coppers and uranium. All of this to support human civilization to its maximum. Then Allah says, Is not the one who created the heavens and the earth also able to in That he created create others like you? Why not? Yes, of course. He knows everything about his creation. His affair is, Allah's affair is what? When he wants something, فَيَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَقُونَ He says to it, be, and it is. فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So perfect is Allah in whose hand is the kingdom of all things. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And to him you will return. So I hope a little bit of the flow of the surah was made clear compared to before when you were only just reading translation. That why it refers to the Prophet and then that story to relate it back to the Prophet. Then the, okay, you don't listen to the messenger, but you don't see my signs either. This, then their attitude is mentioned, then the day of judgment is mentioned, then the Jannah is mentioned, hell is mentioned, and then this is the concluding remarks. So, أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسأل المسلمين والمسلمين.